Good day everyone. Today guys, I'm gonna show you how to pack going to the United States. I'm gonna show you what to wear, how, how to wear properly, and the luggages that we're, you're gonna bring from Philippines to the US or whichever country you're coming from. I'm gonna give you some tips because there are things like uh, you have to consider before packing up things, things you have to wear before uh, during your flight and after your flight or for the next flight, you have to think about all, all those things. I just arrived here in the US, so I'm gonna show you everything that's inside our bag uh, just before we and pack for our luggages. So if you're interested, stay tuned and watch So guys, disclaimer, this is only based on my own personal experience and my own personal knowledge, okay? So on this side are my luggages. Uh, you have to have like four sets. Uh, two, 23 kilograms or I think 40 pounds uh, each bag. Then one should be at least seven kilograms for your carry-on and your personal item. Same with my wife, uh, she has two big luggages, one small carry-on, and one personal items. So this is actually their entire things that you can only bring coming from the Philippines to the US. You can add things more, but it does cost a lot. So it's best not to. So let's take a look closer. Here. All of the bags that we bought, mga kawan, is all with TSA locks. Okay? Remember this logo? You have to buy those things. Uh, this bag doesn't have a uh, specific lock on it, so we bought a um, TSA padlock. See, there's a lock here. So whenever they need to open this up, they don't have to break your padlocks and then put it back. Sometimes when they break the padlocks, they cannot open, uh, return it anymore. So this one, you don't have to have the padlock anymore. Then my bag. And remember I told you before, it's nice to have this along. And my personal bag. Then for my wife, same thing. PSA lock, PSA lock, both over 3 kilograms, and this one also. And her bag is nice enough that it has like a where to put in this one. So, pretty cool. So let's start with our personal bag. Okay, so this is my laptop bag, mga one. So here, of course, I have my laptop and most of the gadgets. But before that, I'll show you something. Inside our personal bag is another smaller personal bag. Um, for us, it's more convenient to travel this way. This is where we put our wallet, cell phone, passport, um, small important things that we have to carry on and within reach, like chargers or power banks. So we put everything here. So whenever we're in a plane, it will be easier for us to get everything. Just make sure this thing fits in your personal bag so you won't have any problems. Because some of the airport authorities, they don't want you to have an extra personal bag. So if they see you bringing this one and this one separately, they might tell you to you have to pay or um, put it somewhere else or discard one of the bag uh, because it's considered additional personal item and you're only allowed to have one personal item. Personal item bag. So like I said, a wallet, I have our comb, I have my toothbrush here, I have my headset, cell phones, uh, of course my camera, that's, that's on, which I'm using right now. Then of course, something to help me slip by, and my mask, extra mask, and I think that's it mostly, a few more few points, and keys of course. Next will be this bag, here bag is my most likely a gadget bag. So of course my laptop. I really have to bring my laptop with me and you can't put this in your check-in baggages so you have to put this in your personal items. And the reason why I put this in your personal item and not, not on the carry-on luggages is because during the inspection time or whenever you uh, pass by those x-ray machines or scan machines, you have to put this out. Sometimes they do ask you to put, the, put this out and all your gadgets. So for me, I'd rather have this in one place that I don't have to open everything up during those inspection time. Okay. So the, usually, this one will go through without ever any problems. So this one will be the one that I have to put it out. Like for the laptop, most of the gadgets or items that are bigger than the cell phone, you have to put it out in some places. But most of the things inside here are not that big. So this is the only thing I have to put out. Then, like I said, gadget items. So here, I have my mouse, my charger, um, memory banks. I do have a lot of this. Then here, my extra camera, extra batteries. Uh, whatever batteries that you have or items that has but batteries in this, you have to put it in your personal items or in your carry-on luggages. Never on your check-in bags, okay? Chargers, cords, um, I do have the Roku app here. <laughs> here. 
remote has a battery on it so I have to put it here also then more memory banks and more memory banks so life of a content creator so you have to have a lot of this for us then I have some little snacks <laughs> Then we also have this. This is where we put all of our documents that we need to put. Um, we don't really have to make this one, uh, have this kind of thing, but for us, for easier access for everything, we would like to have this one. Uh, tickets and everything that we can print out and that we need to show, we put it here. Um, but you can also use a cell phone for it. They will accept us as well. Uh, for those coming into the US first time, you can put your visa packet here. But honestly, I don't advise you to put it here because it is quite heavy also. Especially during my time, it was quite bigger. Now, I think it's a little bit thinner. They don't have to give you all those things that inside. So, if that's the case, it's best for you to put it here on your uh, carry-on luggages. You only have to take it out after you land in the United States. So, this would this will only take like one minute for you to open up and pull out that uh, important document. So you don't really have to carry it all the time for you. We only pull this out after we finish immigration and board the plane. And that's the time we put this out. So whenever we're in the plane, it's easier for us to get things. Oh, for the weight. Um, based on experience, they don't really weigh these things. Um, even in Manila or in the US, they did not have to weigh our personal bags. As long as they don't look bulky, too bulky. They didn't have specific sizes for this. So for me to be safe, just use a regular bag or regular size bag. Don't get those bulky kind of bags because if that's the case, then that's the time they might consider calling you and maybe ask you to pay something or fine for it. Because anything bigger than this, I think it might cause some problems. Yes, nothing really much in here. Most of the things I put here are clothes that I need to wear or things that I need whenever I need to freshen up. Like, of course, like deodorant, uh, brief, boxers, shorts, uh, additional shirts. Uh, so, they also weigh this. Uh, it should not exceed 7 kilos. Uh, but for this, actually, it's allowed 7 point something. So, uh, they didn't consider or didn't ask me to pay anything for that. They just weigh this. They weigh this in the Philippines, in PAL. Uh, but in the US, eh, they didn't even care. So, most of the strict procedures or strict rules is only being followed in the Philippines. You have to be wise on packing on your carry-on because um, this will really help you. For example, if you're coming to the United States via PAL, I really suggest don't wear anything thick. This one, this one is actually really thick already for PAL. Uh, why? Because PAL is really warm during the first few hours of your flight. It's really warm. Uh, I think it was four to five hours before the aircon really picked up. Even though I keep on asking them to please put in the air, put in the air, but I don't think they have any control of that, honestly. Uh, if you notice whenever you ride the plane, it's warm. It's not like the other domestic pals where they have like a small fan in it. Here on the bigger planes, I don't see any of those things. So yeah, I suffered for four to five hours before the air really kicked in. But for the other planes, like for Japan Airlines, I don't remember having that kind of feeling. Even for the, uh, when we were going from Singapore, we rode the plane, it didn't have that kind of problem. Um, but for PAL, it's been like three times now. So I think it's safe to say that I think that's how the uh, mechanics works inside a plane. So if ever you're taking PAL, just wear like a regular t-shirt, uh, pants, or even just a shorts. Just a simple outfit. Don't wear those really thick ones. If you do want to bring some thick jackets and everything, you don't really have to, what's this? You don't really have to wear them immediately. You can use them when you land in the United States. You do have some time for you to change clothes, so better put it inside your carry-on luggages, just in case you need them. Uh, if you're worried about the weight for the jacket, then you can just tie them. And after checking in your luggages, then you can put them on your carry-on. Uh, the weight won't matter anymore. So yeah, that's an additional tip for you. Like for Mega One, I just wore a t-shirt coming to the United States. Then when we arrived in LA, uh, the place wasn't cold enough. So I didn't have to wear a jacket on. So I just kept it in. So I just kept the jacket inside my luggages. Then after afterwards, when we flew going to 
uh, Kentucky, when we arrived in Louisville, the place was really cold. So that's the time I wore my jacket. So see, you don't really have to wear the clothes, the thick clothes immediately, especially if you're coming from the Philippines. Uh, Best that you bring an empty bottle or like a bottled water. You have to empty the water whenever you go through those uh, uh, we're in the check you for the packages and luggages so you have to empty them but keep the empty bottle uh, the reason is water water in airports are expensive what bottle water i mean they are expensive but uh, any place or any airport that i went to they have like a fountain for you to refill your water so it's best to put one uh, except in the philippines now for the airport in the philippines they don't even want you to bring any water that's been bought in the airport especially if you're riding PAL in Terminal 2. That's a really, really, really weird rule for them. I really hate them for that. Um, you have to eat everything outside the place wherein they did another screening. After you did a screening here, after five minutes, you have to do another screening just for you to wait for the boarding area. And you can't buy anything from the inside and bring it there. They don't want especially water. So that's really, really weird. Then for the check-in baggages, I'll show you some of the things we did back here that's something special. Most of the things are of course the clothes, the slippers, the shirts, the jackets, and all of the things that you need. Um, for Filipinos, of course, some of them bring tabo. So yeah, you can bring them or you can just buy some like a glass or something big mug or something like a big pill over here, then you can use that. So either way. Okay. So here, like for this, we did some buy some stuff. Like we did have some powder stuff over here, like here, uh, chicken pyanggang, it's like a specialty in our uh, small city, and chula itum, like a specialty for the food for the Muslims, so this is really nice. So we put them inside the Ziploc bag. And... <laughs> Where's this? Yeah, <laughs> San Marino to yo. <laughs> si Mrs. Toa. Uh, so for bottles, we do put something like this just to make sure that it won't break. Uh, they sometimes ask you if there's something breakable there, but they still don't really take care. So it's best to put something like this. We do put them in Ziploc because some of the bags, if, just in case this will break or the bottle will break, it will leak. So at least it will be inside the Ziploc bags, so it won't really matter. You can buy this in any SM market, so you can use them. So it's like a one-time use. It's very common here in the US, so we are also using this. So like same thing with perfumes, if ever they break, you will be inside the bag. Pants it, pants it. <laughs> Request, actually, hindi ko yung brand na gusto niya padala sa amin. Sorry, ate. Gusto niya yung sunflower. So, hindi ko nagin siya. Yung mga pasalubong, of course. Yan, <laughs> hindi gusto magpaputi dito mga kawana. So mahal yung ganitong bar sa atin. So it's expensive. Here in, the, here in the US, no one really wants to be like really white except for the Asians and uh, more dark colored skin. Most of the white uh, or the uh, white race, they really like our skin color. So like for me, I don't do any more, any more buy these things. Uh, but some of our colleagues here still use this, so we're just bringing them as pasalubong. Here's like specific telata. Del Mundo. <laughs> Request ng brother ko. So we have to bring this. So this is peanuts. So like a personally cooked peanuts. Requested by my cousin in Arizona. So and it's my auntie who did this. So she's really asking for this. So we brought this from Philippines to the US. They were even asking us to bring 10 kilos. <laughs> uh, but no, I can bring 10 kilos because I have a lot of things also to bring, bring back home and other pasalubong for other people. So I just leave it to three kilos for them, for the peanuts. I do have some more here. Then I do have some of my other gadgets here, uh, but all the gadgets here, like accessories for my camera and vlogging, are are or doesn't contain any batteries. So I put them here. Uh, I use a Ziploc bag also to organize myself. So it does help for me. Purge three. <laughs> See, this is the. So make sure the sizes for your luggage are within the scope that's been posted in the TSA for your airlines. Uh, weight, most of the weight are like usually the same format. But some of the airlines do have different weight allowances. I think Japan Airlines before was like 10 kilograms. I think that was before. I'm not sure now if it's still the same thing. So make sure to check with your airlines. And also if you do have some differences between the weights between from one airline to the other airline, so make sure when you book or when you plan buying the tickets, make sure they're the same. 
uh, like for us for here in the US, Southwest is only one allows like 23 kilograms. So that's why we took Southwest. Some US airlines don't cater like 23 kilograms. So it's best to check those things. Then of course the dimensions of your bags, like I said, they are strict about this. Particularly things that are really obviously like uh, out of shape, like too much bug in it. So they will really might find you for that or ask you to pay additional things for extra weight or for the sizes. And for the boxes, some boxes, they do have a specific box that they use for like a dimensions. And some airlines do follow that strictly. So you have to take note about that as well. Someone asked me before if it's okay for her to use the luggages that she bought, but it's slightly bigger than the uh, size that's recommended by the TSA or the airlines. Uh, for me, I rather that you buy a new luggages. Just buy a new one with the correct sizes. Because if you're gonna have some problems coming here to the US, and just imagine, they'll ask you that's too big, then you have to pay for it, or that they you don't have enough money to pay for that, so you're gonna have some problems. Or they really don't want to take care of that big luggages, so you, I don't know if you were gonna find another bag or wait to get a new bag for you to put in your other things. So those are the things you don't want to uh, be bothered during your first time coming here to the US. So it's better to be safe than sorry. And also, take note, buy luggages that are really, really sturdy. Don't buy things that are cheap and might easily break. Some of them might look good, but if they're too cheap, then yeah, don't buy them <laughs> based on experience. <laughs> Uh, there's one time I actually bought a new luggage just going to Hong Kong or going to Manila I think. It's the first time I bought that luggage and it was being sold in Lucky Plaza. It looked really nice and looked sturdy, looked kind of sturdy but the price was too cheap. So the first problem I had was after I brought in the taxi, I put it out, the handles came out so my bag fell all over. Then the tires broke, then there was a crack and etc. So it's not worth to buy cheap luggage. So it's better to invest something a little bit pricey, just a little bit. You don't have to buy those really super high. Most of these bags will really last long. Like for us, uh, this bag has been with me like I think 10 years. It's way back in the Singapore or before coming to the Singapore then when we arrived here in the US it still works. Um, the only time it broke was during the airport transfer in, which was the fault of Cebu Pacific if I'm not mistaken. If you're like me who likes black luggages, <laughs> So make sure to put something that looks or something that will stand out so you won't have any hard time finding your luggages. Like for me and my wife, she only puts this ribbon on here just whenever it passes by so we can take a look at it. Sometimes she goes with like neon ribbons and everything. So those things does help. Can I forget one thing for your neck pillows. You don't have to put them inside your bag. You can just like dangle them from the outside from one of the slings and that will be okay. Uh, for me and my wife, sometimes we bring two a piece. Like for me, I brought another one and I just put it over here. I think I left it downstairs. So they don't really mind about it. You can even bring a staff toy with you. It won't matter. They not really think about that. So mostly that's it, Makawan. You just have to follow all the rules that they're setting. For example, uh, for the liquids, for the carry-on luggages, don't put anything above 100 ml. Even though, um, like a toothpaste is one of the ml, but you already use like one, uh, you only use like three fourth of it, and there's only like one fourth remaining, you can still use that. You can't. They will still tell you it's 100 ml packaging, so you can use that. So at least 90, get something above below 100, per 100 ml, then you'll be safe. Then anything liquid on your carry on, put them on a Ziploc bag. Uh, for me, even for the bigger on my check-in luggages, I still put them on Ziploc bag just in case they break or loose or anything that leaks, I would rather have them like on a sealed uh, plastic. For the medicines, you can bring a lot of uh, over-the-counter medications. They don't really mind that at all. Uh, but just be wary about the things that you're buying. Make sure those over-the-counter medications you're buying doesn't contain anything that's illegal. So you can see that from the TSA. But most of the cough and cold medications we buy, the spray, the nasal spray or the sore throat spray for the fever, for the paracetamol, you can buy all those things. They don't have paracetamol here. So if you like, just buy some few of them. You can buy some of the medications that you normally use here in the US, uh, things that are quite expensive or like your regular medications that you need to take or your maintenance medications. Uh, we did buy some few boxes of some uh, heart pills or medications 
uh, pills here but make sure that you have a prescription about for that or make sure that you have a receipt for that um, that's the first thing we did before but now I did have some boxes for medications here but I don't have any prescriptions or don't have anything but I was still able to go through without any problem so I don't know if it changed or anything but yeah, I think you can still do that as long as you don't buy too much like too much okay? that it will look like you're trying to sell something here in the in the US so it's not good then for the food you can bring most of the canned goods you can bring a lot of them yes you have to bring canned goods when you arrive here in the US uh, especially if you're new you really have to bring them just to help you transition from the things that you're familiar with things that you're familiar eating here in the Philippines versus when you arrive here in the US and of course during those times you do have to save up so you have to use whatever things that you can utilize in order to save some money particularly if you're like me a staffing agency nurse that when I arrive here I can't work without my social security number we are lucky enough they, that they are able to work here without social security number but for most of us we don't have Okay, hopefully makawan you learned something from this video i'll put in some more videos uh, that i think might help you during your stage coming here to the united states so if you like this video please click the like button subscribe button and please share to your friends again po ako po si nurse juan de la cruz your rfw nurse thank you for watching and bye bye stay safe